bringing you the IM341 Extra Practice Number 4 Solutions on Solving Quadratics by Factoring. Let's go check out the puzzle that goes with this one. Alrighty, so here's the puzzle associated with this extra practice. The idea here is that we have a bunch of quadratic equations down below. We need to solve them. And then once we figure out the answers, uh, take a look at that answer, look at the word next to it, and put that word next to the appropriate letter box up here. So for example, uh, if we solve problem A and we figure out that the solution is uh, this one here, polo, we would go ahead and put polo next to box A. Now I don't know that that's the answer or not. Um, we're going to find out, aren't we? Alrighty, here we go with problem A. Before I can solve this by factoring, I need to put it in standard form, which means this negative 21 needs to be moved over to the left, so I've got it zeroed out. So I'll add 21 over to the left side. And now I'm looking for factors of 21 that add up to negative 10. Well, let me think. 1 and 21 doesn't work. 3 and 7 works if we have both of them negative. So I can split this up into n minus 3, n minus 7. And then zeroing each of those out, we end up with n equals positive 3 and positive 7. So let me see here. 3 and 7, where do I see that in my answers? Uh, 7 and 3 right here. So I'm going to put the in box A. Next up, for problem B, we need to first zero this equation out. So let me subtract that 5 over to the left side. And now I can look for factors of negative 5 that add up to 4. So there's 1 and 5, and, and that's about it. Uh, we can make this work if we make it negative 1 and positive 5. So I'll split this up into x minus 1 and x plus 5. And then zeroing each of those out, 1 minus 1 is 0. And then we have... Uh, also, negative 5 plus 5 would give us 0. And I wrote n, it should be x. But yeah, we have 1 and negative 5 as our solutions. So that's going to be right here, negative 5 and 1, novice. So that's going under spot B. For this next problem, we're trying to solve this thing by factoring. Not in standard form, so I need to move this 7u over to the left side by subtracting it, and I'll put it between the u squared and the negative 8. So we're going in decreasing order of exponents. So I have u squared minus 7u minus 8 equals 0. And at this point, since I have a squared coefficient of 1, I can just look for factors of negative 8 that add up to negative 7. Well, 1 and 8 would do this if we have positive 1 and negative 8. So I've got u plus 1 and u minus 8. And then zeroing each of those out, I end up with u equals negative 1 for that first parentheses and positive 8, because 8 minus 8 is 0, for that second one. And it looks like I've got that over on the right side here, 8 and negative 1. That's going to be water going after C here. To solve this problem, I'm going to zero things out first by subtracting that 11m from both sides. So I'll bring that over to the left side. And now I notice here I've only got two terms and they have a common factor of m that I can take out of all that. So that leaves me with an m minus 11 inside. And then setting each of these individually equal to 0 in solving, we have m equals 0. And then uh, if m minus 11 equals 0, add 11, we get 11 for the other m value. So 0 and 11, that's right here. That's where uh, polo should end up is in the d spot. Here we go with problem number E, if that's a thing. Uh, this one is all out of standard form. Uh, we definitely need to clean this up a bit. To get my squared term positive, I'm going to add it to the left side. The 9a is already there, so I'll just do plus 9a. And then I have to add the 18 to get it over to the left side. So that gives us the 0 that we need on the other side. Uh, since I just have a squared coefficient of 1, I'm looking for factors of 18 that add up to 9. 1 and 18 doesn't work, 2 and 9 doesn't work, 3 and 6 does, if they're both positive. So I have a plus 3 and a plus 6. And zeroing each of those out, I end up with a equals negative 3 for that first one and negative 6 for the next one. So negative 3, negative 6. I see negative 6 and negative 3 right down there. Uh, so that's going to be player going in the E box. On this one, I need to get it in standard form before I can use any kind of factoring to solve the equation. So let me keep h squared where it is, 
and I'm gonna add everything or subtract it over to that left side. So positive 4h and then negative 32 equals zero. Squared coefficient of one, so I can just do uh, regular factoring. Factors of negative 32 that add up to four. One and 32, nope. Two and 16, nope. Uh, four and eight. I think I could get a four out of those if I have negative four and positive eight. So h minus four, h plus eight. And then zeroing each of those out for our first parentheses, four minus four is zero, so that gives us that value. And then uh, we can subtract eight to get negative eight for that second parentheses. So that leaves us with this very first option up here, who, that's going in the F box. Here we go with problem G, the first one where we're not going to be able to use just plain old regular factoring to solve it. We do need to get this in standard form, though, so let's subtract 5 over to the left side. And since I have a coefficient of the square term that's not 1, and since I can't take out a common factor of 3, I'm going to have to use the AC method here. So 3 times negative 5 gives me an AC value of negative 15. So now I'm looking for factors of negative 15 that add up to 14. Well, that's pretty easy. Uh, just 1 in, uh, 1 in 15 if I have negative 1 and positive 15. So I'll split this up into negative 1y plus 15y. And now since I have four terms, I can use grouping. Take a y out of those first two, leaving me with 3y minus 1. And now I can take a 5 out of the next two, that leaves me also with 3y and minus 1. 3y minus 1 is a big common factor that I can take out of everything. That leaves me with y plus 5 as my other factor. And now setting each of these factors equal to 0 and solving, if 3y minus 1 equals 0, I would add 1 and then divide by 3 to get 1 third for one of my answers. And then negative 5 plus 5 is 0, so that's my other answer. All right. So let me see if I can find one-third in negative five. Well, there it is right there toward the top of that second column I have here. Uh, so going in this spot down here, we've got a was. For this problem, before I do any factoring, let's put this in standard form. I can do that by just subtracting 9x over to the left side and uh, putting it between the 2x squared and the 10. So I've got 2x squared minus 9x plus 10 equals zero. And I cannot take out a common factor from this. Uh, I could do with 2 and 10, but, but 9 is kind of the deal breaker there. So let me use my AC method instead. 2 times 10 gives me 20. And now I'm looking for factors of 20 that add up to negative 9. 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. Well, negative 4 and negative 5 would do it. So let me split this up into negative 4x minus 5x. And now I can go back and use grouping on these four terms. So for the first two terms, I can take a 2x out of both of those. That leaves me with an x minus, this will be another 2x, or 2 just just 2 because the x's cancel. And then for my next term I can take out, uh, since my third term is negative, I'll take out a negative, a negative 5 to be specific. Leaves me with an x and a minus 2. So x minus 2 is my common factor coming out of all that. Uh, 2x minus 5 is the leftovers that I put in its own parentheses. And zeroing each of these out, uh, 2 minus 2 is 0, so there's one of my answers. And for the next one, if I set this equal to 0, I would add 5 and divide by 2 to get positive 5 halves. So 2 and positive 5 halves, where do I see that? Uh, right there, right there. Uh, upset is the word that's going in the H block here. For problem I, let me get this in standard form first. Since 5t squared is already positive, I'm going to move everything else over to the right side uh, just so I can keep that squared term positive. So I'll have the 5t squared, and I'm going to write all this on the left, but I'm really moving everything over to the right, so just use your imagination. Uh, we also had to subtract 12t to get it over there, so minus 12t, and subtract the 9, so we have minus 9, and then equals 0. Let me think here. 5 is not a common factor for all of these, uh, so if I want to factor this, I'm going to have to use AC method. 5 times negative 9 gives us an AC value of negative 45, so I want factors of negative 45 that add up to negative 12. 
Hmm, one and 45 doesn't work. Uh, three and 15, I think I could get a 12 out of that. Positive three, negative 15, that would give me a negative 12. So let me split this middle term up then into positive 3t minus 15t. And now I can use grouping since I've got four terms. First two terms, I can take out a t, leaving me with 5t plus 3. And then for the next two terms, let me take out a negative 3 from those. That leaves me with 5t plus 3. So 5t plus 3 comes out. t minus 3 goes in. Setting each of them equal to 0, for 5t plus 3, I would subtract 3 and divide by 5. So negative 3 halves would be that, or 3 fifths rather, would be that answer. And then 3 minus 3 is 0, so 3 is my other answer. Negative, one, uh, negative 3 fifths and positive 3. Let me see if I can find that. Looks like we've got it right there in the middle on the left side here. So that would be because going in the I box. J is a little bit interesting. It's kind of breaking the mold of the last few problems we've seen. Uh, when we subtract 16 to get this in standard form, I notice that I've got two perfect squares with a minus between them. So I can actually use my a squared minus b squared shortcut here, and I, and I double check there's no common factors I can take out. So if you do a squared minus b squared, that's equivalent to a plus b a minus b. Uh, so essentially, we can just square root both things and put them in a plus and minus parentheses. Square root of 9y squared is going to be 3y. Square root of 16 is 4. So we have 3y plus 4 and 3y minus 4. Setting each of these equal to 0 and solving, for my first parentheses, I would be subtracting 4 and dividing by 3 to get negative 4 over 3. And then for the next one, I would add 4 and divide by 3, so just positive 4 thirds. So plus or minus 4 thirds, that's down here at the bottom on the second column. Uh, so that's his, so J is his. That last problem was nice if you remembered your perfect square shortcut. Uh, whether or not you do, though, this one has its own kind of difficulty level. Let's first start by getting this in standard form. Let me add the d squared, the 8d squared, over to the left side to get that to be positive. And these are a little bit out of order, so I'm going to write the plus 26d next, followed by the positive 15. And it looks like there's no common factors I can take out of any of this. So AC method it is. 8 times 15, that's giving me an AC method of, I believe, 120, AC value of 120. So now I need factors of 120 that add up to 26. There's a lot of factors of 120. Let's start going through them. We got 1 and 120. That's not going to do it. Uh, 2 and 60. 3 and 40. So we're getting a little closer. 4 and 30. Closer still. Um, but we need these both things to have the same sign. So we can't do one positive, one negative. 5. How many times does 5 go into 120? Uh, I believe it's 24 times. That would be 29 that we could get out of that. How about 6? 6 and 20. Oh, that adds up to 26. So let me do 20, 6d plus 20d. We'll split that up. And now I can use grouping on what's left over here. For my first two terms, I can take a 2d out of those, leaving me with 4d plus 3. For the next two, I can take out a 5. That leaves me with a 3d, or 4d rather, because 5 goes into 24 times. Uh, 15 gives you 3, though, dividing that by 5. So 4d plus 3 comes out. 2d plus 5 is the other uh, bag of factors there, bag of stuff that we're putting in our factorization. And now I need to set each of these equal to 0 and solve them. So 4d plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 3. Divide by 4, so negative 3 fourths. For the 2d plus 5, we'll do minus 5 and then divided by 2, so negative 5 over 2. So we've got negative 3 fourths, negative 5 over 2. That is down here at the bottom. So that's going to be horse going in box K. So they're following up that last problem with uh, this one, which is, if you know what you're doing, much faster. So I'm going to get it in standard form. I like my 2n squared being positive. So let me subtract the 18n over to b with the 2n squared. And that gives us 0 on the other side. 
Uh, so I subtract it over to the right side, and then I moved everything over to the left, just so I have my zero on the right side. Uh, now, it looks like I actually have a common factor of 2n that I could take out of all of this, so that's kind of nice. That leaves me with an n minus 18n divided by 2n is going to give me minus 9. Setting each of these equal to 0 and solving, if 2n equals 0, then that means n must be 0, because 2 times 0 is 0. And then 9 minus 9 is 0, so there's my other answer. 0 and 9 should be fairly easy to find that. There it is, right there. That'll be a could going in spot L. So after that short break, it looks like this one is going to throw us back into AC method at some point. Let me start with standard form. 10V squared can stay where it is. We are going to subtract 13V to get it over there and subtract the 3 as well, leaving us with 0 on the other side. Uh, AC value is 10 times negative 3, so negative 30. So I want factors of negative 30 that add up to negative 13. 1 and 30 doesn't work. 2 and 15 works if I have positive 2 and negative 15. So let me split this up into plus 2V minus 15V. Using some grouping now, first two terms, I can take out a 2V. That leaves me with 5V plus 1. For my next two, I'm going to take out a negative, negative 3. So that gives me a 5V plus 1. So 5V plus 1 is one factor, common factor that we can take out. And then 2V minus 3 is the other one. Setting these equal to 0 and solving, for the first parentheses, I can subtract 1, divide by 5, so negative 1 fifth. And then for the next one, we're going to be adding 3 and dividing by 2, so positive 3 halves. Negative 1 fifth, positive 3 halves, that's way at the top of my second column. That's a not going in spot M. All right, problem N, final boss battle. Uh, I like my 5P squared being positive, so when I put this in standard form, I'm going to leave that where it is. Uh, the 23P, 23p then I'll move over here by subtracting it. So we have 5P squared minus 23P. And then there was already a 24 over there that can stay. And I moved the 23P over to the right, but then I wrote everything on the left because I hate having a zero on the left side. All right, can't do any common factors. Let's use AC method. 5 times 24. Let's see, 5 times 20 is 100. 5 times 4 is 20. So that's 120 for my AC value. So I'm looking for factors of 120 that add up to negative 23. Hmm, 1 and 120 doesn't work. We've got 2 and 60, 3 and 40, 4 and 30, none of this is working. Uh, 5 and 24 doesn't work. What comes after 5? 6 and 20, that's close, that's 26. Still not quite where we need to be. I don't think 7 going to work. How about 8? 8 goes in there, hmm... 15 times, I believe. Yeah, 8 times 15, that would be uh, 80 plus 40 would be 120. Yep. So that actually works if I have negative 8 and negative 15. Let me break this up into minus 8p minus 15p. Using some grouping, we've got a p coming out of the first two of those. So that's 5p minus 8 left over. Uh, for the next batch here, we have a negative 3 that I can take out leaves me with a 5p minus 8. So 5p minus 8 is going to be our common factor. And then p minus 3 is our leftovers. Setting those equal to 0 and solving, I would add 8 and divide by 5 for that first parentheses. That's 8 fifths. And then 3 minus 3 is 0, so 3 is my other answer. 8 fifths and 3, that's right up here. That's going to be swim. Alrighty, time to see what we've got for the end of the puzzle here. So this is a puzzle that says, did you hear about? And then here's the, the, the crazy thing going on. The Did you hear about the novice water polo player who was upset because his horse could not swim? So you might be wondering, well, why is that funny? Uh, well, polo, regular polo, is played with a horse on grass with some mallets. Uh, water polo, very different. That, that's, I think that's... Marco Polo, maybe, or, or no, it's something else. You're, you're, you're waiting around in a pool without a horse. Anyway, until next time, Mr. Sutton signing off. Keep on swimming.